Hi everyone, Happy New Year 2021. What a year 2020 has been and we are all so relieved to say goodbye to it. Off you go. I wanted to uh, start the year off not with the usual fashion video. I actually have a fashion video lined up for spring summer 2021 trends but I thought I wanted to share with you um, some thoughts on what I'm going through and also hope to be able to inspire some of the viewers because I have found out that there are a few young viewers to my channel and they say that they are inspired by my experiences as well as my advice so that's a heavy burden for me to carry so I just try to do the best that I can. A lot of us are going through a very trying period because of the COVID. COVID obviously has affected the tourism industry which is one of the biggest uh, money earning sectors in our state and that has trickled down to the hotel industry to the fnb industry as well as to the retail industry and i have friends in those sectors who have shared with me and i've got colleagues who have either lost their jobs or have had to grapple with a cut in their salary I just wanted to remind people that if you are from Borneo, even for other parts of the world for that matter, our ancestors came here from China for the most part on a junk ship. And for those of you who are younger, in those days they didn't have internet. So they can't just go on the internet and check out, oh, okay, what's Borneo like? What's the weather like? What are the people like? For all you know, there may be Hannibals there. They just went on that junk ship and perhaps some of them have had relatives who's come here earlier on and who wrote to them to say that hey this is a nice place why don't you come here and join me that kind of thing i mean even in any other continent like in australia or in the us a lot of the uh, pioneers went on that ship uh, not knowing what is in store for them so for them to have just made that journey because I've seen a lot of documentaries as well as written accounts and some people didn't even make it through the journey because obviously when you are with so many people in that closed compartment and in those days don't forget they didn't even have running water there are bound to be people who would have died even before reaching the destination from diphtheria or some sort of other diseases so once they've settled down here don't forget our ancestors also had to grapple with the Japanese occupation as well as the British occupation as well and I've never heard of any one of the people who complained during that period what it was like so you can imagine I think our situation is much more better than theirs because we still have utilities with us we still have running water electricity our homes um, it's not as if like in those days when it was during the World War II and during the Japanese occupation, if they left the house, you don't know whether they're going to come back because they may be shot for all you know or kidnapped, which is what happened to my mom's uncle when she was in Korea. Her uncle, who was an architect in those days for that generation, for that elder generation, it's very, very rare to have people like him available. And he went out and he never came back. He was kidnapped. To North Korea because in those days they need people like doctors, architects, those kind of professionals to build up their economy and he never came back. They never saw him anymore. Uh, my mom also told me that during the war um, she's had to, she could actually speak Japanese and write Japanese those older generation very very well because during the Japanese occupation they were not allowed to speak Korean whatsoever otherwise they would get into trouble and they taught that in schools. Anyway, what I wanted to share with us is that that spirit of survivor, that spirit of resilience is in each and every one of us. So I think we just need to be positive as well as the fact that we have survived SARS previously, not only SARS, but when the airplanes went missing or when it crashed, that really affected our tourism. It, it dipped tremendously as well, but we still bounced back, right? Obviously, it's going to take time to pick up again, but if you want to look at the positive side of things, we really had time to reassess everything in our lives to see what is really important, which our, our family and our friends and our health 
we've had that time to rest and recuperate and contemplate. So I think that we will go ahead in 2021, raring to go, energized and full of positivity, full of uh, good vibes to go ahead and to rebuild everything. And let me tell you, I've been to hell and back and I'm still alive. For those of you who think that I would just sit in a corner and rot to death, you are seriously wrong. I'm still alive. So um, also during the time that I was working for people, actually come to think of it, I was actually working to help them to achieve their dream, but not mine. You are actually working for that pay packet and you're so used to and your, your mind is so conditioned that at the end of the month, you're going to have that neat little pay packet, obviously for all the hard work that you've put in. But at the end of the day, it's just a pay packet and it's just an, a means of making a living. But I, I felt really empty inside. And to tell you the truth, I actually wanted to do this kimchi business and I did try to do that a couple of years ago. I didn't tell anyone about it and it was a total failure. Nobody bought my kimchi. Um, I didn't do any marketing properly. The packaging was not so hot, so I gave up. Had I not given up at that point on time, um, there were other other brands that were not existent during that time. They are very, very well established now and they are not even from a Korean background. So had I not given up at that point in time, I think by now I would have been fully, fully established. And I would like to also take this opportunity to thank you so much for your support for my kimchi product. It's growing at a very healthy rate. Obviously, I have to thank Merdeka Supermarket, who was the first one who gave me that chance to showcase my products in their supermarket, as well as having faith in my product. And then again, to City Gourmet at the peak. And additionally, I have just added on Tonghing to my list of places that I'm putting my kimchi. Apart from be being physically fit, Kimchi does help that because it boosts your immune system, a little bit of marketing right there. And as well as the fact that apart from that, obviously, you have to be mentally very, very strong. You have to have a belief system that is so deep, so, so ingrained in you that you are able to going to make it and even better than before. And JK Rowling said it best when she mentioned that the love that her mother had for her um, her mother passed on just before she became very, very successful with the publishing of her books. What she said as well is that the love that her mother had for her, it just can't be switched off. Even if a person passes on, you still can feel the love that they have for you, which I feel it so very strongly. So I think this kimchi, in a way, is just the smallest tribute that I can possibly make to honor my mom's memory and as well as to share with you the recipe that has been handed down for generations from my grandma's grandma to my mom all the way from Korea when she came to Borneo. Obviously, they didn't do it commercially. I am the first one to do so. And obviously, I do have regrets that I didn't do it earlier when she was still alive. But I truly believe and I can feel that her spirit is with me at all times. And also, some of my ex-colleagues were saying that they will let off uh, work at this late age. And what are they going to do because they've been working their whole life. I just wanted to share with you that I think all those times that I was working for all those bosses, two of the tycoon bosses that I worked for actually evolved at the age of 50 plus. When they saw that their main area of business is not doing well and they don't see any foreseeable future for that. So that's the reason why they could always evolve to another business that is related to the main area of business and they have done even better in the second business than they have for the main business because businesses come and go it depends on the market demand and value and during the time that i was working for them they were extremely demanding yes i told you that they are very very kind but when it comes to the business and when it comes to your job tasks they demand that you give them the best possible quality of work that is why I think a lot of my colleagues as well are very, very successful today because we were able to work under such pressure, under such tight deadlines and with so many things that they're pushing at us, which is beyond our normal scope of work. But I think on hindsight, 
that's exactly what I really admire about them that that helps us to be survivors in our own right because when it comes to tough periods like this we know how to adjust and also that I am able to see that they always evolve and that is how they survive and that is how they are always ahead of the game they know how to um, evolve and change and adapt to the changing situation I hope that you um, get something out of this message because I don't want my channel to be just like on fashion, on jewelry and so that you can go ahead with guns ablaze for 2021 and make it the year that we really really work hard to rebuild everything so that by 2022 um, everything would be even more fabulous than before so I wish you all the best may God's blessing be upon you and your family thank you so very much God bless and I'll see you again in the next video. Goodbye. Have a great 2021.